and this may be on the personal side of things, right? It may be completely different. Uh, maybe completely like the, the the exact same thing, but um, it can be it could be like completely different. Like, what what are some of the things that um, you've seen change in your personal life as you scaled up your income? Um, peace of mind, not just peace of mind. It's it's really going on holiday and don't caring about the money, but it's also like you have something to fall back on, right? Mm. It's like you don't live paycheck to paycheck. You live something and then you work for something and you can enjoy it because you did it. It's, it's your business. It's, it's something that you created and it's working well. And especially when you go away for a week and you have somebody who is doing strategy or something, it's amazing then, right? Because yeah, you yeah. can trust those people. Um, and purely financially, in a financial perspective, it's, it's just like, okay, I like that. I have it. <laughs> mm. It's such a, it's such like, I know, I know it, it's, it's cheesy, right? And I fully understand that, right? But financial freedom, it's, it's sometimes so enjoyable to just say like, hey, let's go on a restaurant. Let's go eat somewhere. Let's mm. enjoy uh, a ski trip somewhere. It's, it's just changing your mind from day to day and, and just don't have a care about it in the world on that one. It's, it's so cheesy and so cringy, I know, but uh, that's that's the lucky part, I guess. Back with another juicy chat with one of my mentees. Today, I'm chatting with Alex. Now, before going through my mentorship, Alex was actually freelancing and was making around 4K per month. Now, after joining my mentorship and building his e-com agency, so transitioning from being a freelancer to an e-com agency founder, he went from that 4K per month to 25.5K Per month. So I'm very excited to jump on this call with him, really lay back, have a casual conversation and pick apart his journey so that you walk away from this call with incredibly juicy and valuable nuggets. So without further ado, let's get right into it. You're in a different setup, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the moment I bought an apartment. I'm uh, remodeling it, rechanging it. You bought an apartment? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dope. Yeah. Investment, man. Investment to getting my banking yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, it's, I think it's a good thing. Like at the moment, the apartment it is the, the, the house price are expensive. They're really expensive. But by example, in Belgium, it never increased ever the house pricing. Yeah. So if you want to diversify your portfolio, man, the house pricing, cryptocurrency, and then just stock shares, those three men are the golden key. It definitely more, looks more looks more senior um oh, the background the here yeah <laughs> no because you had a you had a dope one before like you had a like a black background um yeah like very techy very techy now you're in a big boss chair it's exactly the big boss chair yeah you can call it that way <laughs> it comes also more senior over which is quite funny for example okay i had some clients with like, like alex who's that on your couch man who's that on your uh above and then like they tell a story man and then when you're talking a story to your clients you, they're hooked. They're always hooked. Uh huh. That's that's key, man. Getting like small picture somewhere and they tell them the story <laughs> like, hey, do you ski? Do you snowboard? And they're like, uh, yeah, right. snowboards. Yeah, you do. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, we should go together. Oh, cool. That's good. <laughs> right? But no joke. Do you ever follow up on that promise? Like you, you go, you go snowboarding with your clients. Okay, I haven't done it yet. Oh, actually, I did I did indoors. I did indoor okay. snowboarding with my clients. Yeah two times okay yeah, that's, that's nice cool. but that's nice. Totally, man. like the, the big sales are not done behind the pc the big sales are done in the bar for real yeah guys if you want to sign clients make sure i'm looking to the car make sure you've got a picture somewhere that just causes a lot of curiosity um so uh so no that's dope man uh, but yeah, I want to get uh, I want to get straight into it um i mean look the, the conversations are are very casual so like there's no really there's no start or end um like i'm probably gonna put that in, in the interview <laughs> but um but yeah i want i want to dig into your journey man because i think um you know i'm not sure if you've seen any of the the uh student interviews but i think one of the really cool things is that like everyone is on the on their different path um what's common is that you know the ecom agency model has helped you tremendously and then and obviously you've been through my mentorship and all that stuff so um you started off as a freelancing, as a freelancer, right? So you started off freelancing. Uh, how was that like compared to like the agency model? Because when I, when I met, first met you, like you were working a lot. Uh, I mean, you're a hardworking guy. I know that, but uh, like you were working insane amount of hours, correct? Yeah, that's pretty much true. 
it, it's still the same though, to be honest. It's still the same, but I'm just making more bank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but no, it's okay. It's a good question though. Like, first of all, the freelancing for me was more about educational purposes. So I had a really good opportunity to work for big agencies, for corporates, which was for me so valuable because I came there as a media or a junior. So I learned a lot from seniors. I learned a lot also from the guys, the sales guys doing their pitches. Um, you learn a lot by just looking and paying attention, right? And that's what was for me, freelancing was ideal. But then I started, I think it was actually before the coaching, I started to do my own clients. And I had some clients running, I think like five, four clients running, which were good, small clients, local clients mostly. And I started outsourcing them, right? I started outsourcing the freelancers and then getting more people in engagement in the agency scene for me. Yeah. Um, but it was really hard because as a freelancer, you know so well what you're doing. And that's communication and translating and building that business model. So you can, by example, really just like copy paste it and tell it to a freelancer who works for yeah. you. It's, it's different. It's a totally different mindset. Um, and yeah, it was for me, I was stuck there. I was stuck building that process and building that template, by example, just building a template like, hey, this is what I do. Um, somebody, please help me with this and uh, try to copy paste it from me. And then we build it together uh, for a client. Mm -hmm. So like systemize the, 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 the whole kind of, the, the whole thing. You, you mentioned um, it's a tough, it's a completely different mindset, right? Was it hard transitioning? Because I, I see this a lot, right? Um, I've had other mentees, or freelancers and and um you know one of the things that i see a lot is like they're great at their craft maybe they make a bunch of money right but um like then comes someone who who hasn't had any experience in the in the in the business world right who hasn't done, done any freelancing uh, and they pick up the kind of the ceo founder role much easier because for they're not stuck in that like previous mindset of like doing everything themselves um you know i'm not saying one is you know obviously, obviously uh, the agency model is all, all about being the, the founder CEO and, and focusing on, on those revenue generating activities. But my point is, and a question is, is there, was it hard to transition um, to that mindset? Like what, what are some of the, the hardest things you found um, transitioning to the agency business model and you now being the CEO? Yeah, that's a great question to be honest. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Like when I started, man, as a freelancer, you're so salty mindset. Everything that you do must be perfect and your knowledge must be everywhere, right? Yeah. And as an agency owner, you have that like 80-20 principle. You know only 20% of what you're selling mostly sometimes, but that's good enough because you're going you're gonna to surround yourself with people who know way more and can help you build your agency. And mm -hmm. that's the biggest mindset change. I have actually needed to confirm on that one that I was really like control freaking everything in my agency in the beginning as a freelancer and then starting up. Uh, and I burned through a lot of freelancers. I burned actually through I think six or seven freelancers mm. in the beginning, um, but just because I was too much of a control freak and too much of mm. just like, I want everything that is precisely done that way. And I know that that works and that works. But in the end, um, it's impossible to know everything, right? It's impossible to know everything. So once you know 20% of what you're selling, 20% of your ads, of your Facebook ads, Google ads, platform, marketing funnels, I don't care what you're doing, click funnels. Just find somebody who can help you and knows more about it. And you're supposed to be the guy that can help the clients, right? Mm -hmm. You're not the guy that helps your freelancer. You're the guy that helps the clients. And that's the big difference I think I made. Mm -hmm. How how did you, um, when you hired these freelancers, right? What are some of the, and, and, and you said you, you've burned through a lot, right? What are some of the traits that you saw with these freelancers that you didn't quite like? Um, which I burned or which I liked? I wish you burned. I wish I burned. Um, the quality of the which I burned, they were really, really hasty. So for example, they, they came in, they were like, hey, this is my plan, this is how I do it. Um, mm -hmm. you want something to Facebook ads and they just did it. And by okay. example, after we were gone, right. Or they just like, Hey, um, campaigns are set up good enough. Ciao. Um, and then once a month we reconnected, we, uh, we came back to each other and talked about it, but then, yeah, you already burned cash and then you already burned like, uh, the structure and then also the trust in your clients a little bit. So that hurts your agency immensely. Um, 
Then freelancers, which I actually noticed this one, because at the moment, when you're looking for a freelancer, you have this ideal person in your mindset. You have this person like, okay, I want somebody who can a little bit do visuals. I want somebody who can do social ads. I want somebody who can write copy in Dutch and in English, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And you have all these elements, and then you're looking for somebody, and you know that somebody is really, really good at ads, but is terrible at copywriting. But yeah. because you're so stuck in the beginning of shit, I can't like try to divert too many uh, talks to too many people. I need to find somebody who's really doing that. You're trying to push those tasks to that person, right? Mm -hmm. And that's also a big mistake that I made because I was just like in my fixed mindset, get like, hey, I need somebody to do this, do this. But I didn't find somebody who can do this. But I actually did find somebody who was good at that. But I burned him because I was pushing him, pushing him to write copy, for example, right? Yeah. And I think that's also the biggest change I made after the coaching we had was um, I was acknowledging where, what people were really good at. I was acknowledging my freelancers and then people were working for me. Um, like, hey, you're actually really bad at <laughs> copywriting, but you're so good at campaigning and you're so good at strategy management and all those elements, right? So yeah. what I did is this, like, gave us, okay, it's going to cost me more because you actually have like the client and the client needs copy and all the rest elements. So it's going to cost me a bit more, but I just put that person purely in strategy and campaigning. And then I found a copywriter who would write a copy for me. I built and we changed my business model and it worked perfectly. So mm -hmm. like acknowledging what, what the freelancer or what, like somebody works for you really can do well and putting the, so putting the person in the good place, right? In the good position within your company. That's that's a powerful move. Yeah. It's a powerful move. Essentially, like creating an environment where they can succeed, right? And, and playing to, to to their strengths instead of like forcing them to be someone that they're not. Because I mean, one of the things about freelancers is like they're great at usually they're they're a mono focus, right? Like they're great at one single thing, um, and and you want to play to that strength. Obviously, you know, ideally, uh, I mean, in, in an ideal world, you have a, a freelancer who can who's great at paid ads and also great at copyright and all that stuff, but. I have also seen that, especially as you start scaling, like that copywriting job um, is quite vital, especially because copywriters, like all they do is they write copy and paid ads experts, like all they do is they run ads, right? And so when you compare those people together um, at a larger scale where you have more clients and it just makes sense financially, it's it's a really powerful move. Um, yeah, but that's the thing which you mentioned, right? When it makes sense financially, in the beginning, you have so little clients that you think like, I need one freelancer who can do it all. And mm. that's like the move that you're gonna make. You're gonna make a move to like, okay, cool. I wanna start this agency and I need people who are good at ads and people who are good to copy, right? And it goes in, it's gonna cost you more in, in the beginning because by example, as I said, like you need those two different people, which is more expensive than just one person who does mm. both for you, right? I, I, I do agree, yeah. But uh, I, I do think that at a, low, at a small scale, like I think copywriting is something that the founder and CEO can do. Like that, that's, I mean, uh, one of the things that, that I, I push people um, and, and in, the ment in the mentorship, right, we, we, we talk about it, like the fact that like copywriting is such an evergreen skill that as a marketer, you know, obviously, yes, we are founders and, and CEOs, but like as a marketer, like I'd rather have the copywriting skill than the pay that skill, right? You know, as long as you know strategy, as long as you know like sales funnels and you have that copywriting skill like that, that's going to serve you very well. So I think like at a, at a small scale, like there's certain things that you as the CEO founder, like you can take when it comes to the service delivery, right? Because it's not it's not something that's going to take like four hours every single day right and four hours in a ceo's like uh, schedule like that's a lot right um but i do agree that yeah like as you scale like i do agree that th those two roles are 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 quite important especially if you don't have that that um that expert who who who's just great at both which is definitely hard to find yeah i totally agree with that and copywriting is is the first hard skill that every market got to learn for real mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's so valuable so so valuable and it comes down to like a lot of practice as well, you know. That's why I feel like at a at a at a small scale, like, and and at a small scale, and and having that pressure of like this is going out to the market, you know, like I I uh, and you improve very fast when when you have that type of pressure. Um, regarding the 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 team right now, right, and and uh, not not so much on the skill side of things, but on the team culture side of things, right. I I know you're big on on like building stuff, right, and and. Uh, Part of that is is making sure that the team is is enrolled in that mission. So, what are some of the 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 strategies that you've implemented to make sure that these people are enrolled in your company culture, in in, in the mission of the company, all that stuff? Are there any changes that maybe you've made from like previous freelancing Alex who didn't know much about managing a team, uh, which is when I first met you, to now 
having that role of of the uh, the founder CEO. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but green the culture is more in little things. My own example. Green the culture to your, your team is more in giving them freedom, giving them responsibility, and also just like people make so many mistakes during your first agency, right? They make so many mm -hmm. mistakes, like they, they miss deadlines or the copy is not good or the clients not little, like that, that's happy. But your team is way more valuable um, than an every other client you can get, right? And I prefer to have a happy team than, than a happy client in my opinion. Um, that's always my my goal. And what I mean- that's a, with, really, that's a really good point, by the way. I really like that. Yeah, for real, man. I, 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 leave, I prefer to kill a client. Um, if, some if the client's obviously like, uh, not behaving, right? Like, I don't think he means, like, for people watching, like, I don't think Alex means, like, look, if, if the team just doesn't get along with the client, like, kill the client, right? Like, if the team tries their best and the client is clearly, like, not on board. Um, exactly. But if the client comes back and say, like, then, then copy feedbacks and then visual feedbacks and it keeps being annoying about the landing page visuals. Like, in, in the end, if the team... It's just being annoyed by it. And if the team feels like they're just monkey tasking, then um, yeah. yeah, then I, I prefer just to, to have a try conversation or conversation with the client about it. Um, and or it changes or uh, or we just kill the project, which is fine both ways, because mm -hmm. uh, in the end it's about happiness, it's about it doing what you love, right? Mm -hmm. And cool to go back on the small things, right? What I mostly do with my team is yeah. We we go on, we go on lunches together, right? We go on lunches together. We meet up every every week, a couple of times. Um, but the thing, the most important part is just being relaxed and always have control about the situation, or at least at least um, present that you have control and that you don't push your stress. Because mm -hmm. as an agency owner, you're continuously under a huge load of stress, and yeah. it's it's so so incredible important to actually don't push it through your team, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's a bit what I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, focus the culture around that everything's like relaxed and everything goes well. And then we don't need to launch on the deadline that the client wants. We want to launch on the deadline that we want, that we feel comfortable with. And mm -hmm. that's a little bit the culture you got to shape um, within your team that they know that you, that you got their back. And then on the other side, you also um, can push back with the clients. That the client yeah, is saying, yeah. hey, but I want to push that deadline, but you say like, okay, but that's more comfortable or let's, let's uh, find a middle way. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's a really good point. Um, I feel like a lot of people have this misconception, especially when you start in business that like, number one, you have to be this like uh, almost dictator figure, right? And that people operate more under like, uh, out of pain, people, people perform better out of like pain and pressure and like. Uh, stress than like inspiration and, and that's just completely false you know like look the the stress and and all that stuff like the that that might be that might work in the short term but i feel like if they work out of inspiration like they're really bought into the project like that that's really where you get the most out of these people especially because it, it, it goes the long term um i do agree yeah exactly exactly in in regards to like your day to day right uh what, what are some of the things you spend your time on what are some of the like non-negotiables as the founder now, what are some of the, the non-negotiables for you? Education, man, education. It's, it's crazy, but like when she starts working really, really hard, you just mm -hmm. notice that you're like in a monkey kind of, of system where you wake up and you start working, you check your email box and you actually live sometimes out your email box, which I don't think is a, sometimes a bad thing, but in the end, you gotta really focus on your own lifestyle and get forward with it. And you gotta educate yourself continuously. Um, so what I do mostly in my life thing, in my lifestyle, is two things. First of all, every morning I prepare myself for like two hour educational. Uh, it's a course mostly, or it's okay. chatting with some other people about marketing, and really getting yeah. like all the values, like hey, what's happening in the market, uh, what's working well, what's working badly, um, what are new changes. Like I try to educate myself as much as possible in two hours time every morning between let's say let's say around between seven till nine o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. And after that, um, it's mostly just pushing the work, getting as much done as possible before let's say one o'clock, two o'clock. After two o'clock, I just go for some hike or just some walking in, in the forest, clearing my mind, and then it's just pushing again. Um, thing from few o'clock up until ten o'clock, just pushing, pushing, pushing. What you gotta do, right? 
Mm. But um, I do prefer to keep my business process development after six o'clock free, which means that everything that I change in the business on a weekly basis, um, designing new pitches, designing new flows, designing new products for my clients, yeah. that I do after six o'clock, seven o'clock in the evening. I feel that that's my most creative more, parts. Most creative, okay, cool. Yes, I'm most creative in the evening. And uh, that's, that's like, you're most relaxed, right? Because you've done everything that you could do that day. And you just know that, okay, cool. I've done my thing today. I'm already successful today. And I, yeah. I learned a lot. I did a lot. Uh, my clients are happy. And then it's the ideal moment for you to just think like broadly. It's, it's like no stress. Um, you have mm. so much opportunity then to just think about, okay, what happened today? How can I improve it today? And what's coming up for next week? Like mm-hmm. maybe a new product uh, on the service that I'm going to send out in the markets. Mm-hmm. One of our, our last conversations, right, uh, was, uh, well, we talked about a, a bunch of things, right? But uh, the one topic that we did touch on is, is health, right? The health component. Um, so how is that? Because you mentioned like, you feel like you're not getting enough, like, uh, you know, like, you're not uh, you're not moving enough. Um, like you're, you're, I think we also talked about diet, but like diet is not as as as, as much on point as, as as you think it should be, um, and that's part of you know the some things that that we're slowing you down. Have you <laughs> checking in with you? Have you have you implemented uh, stuff we talked about? Which I, I did see, like I I did you know I, I definitely do see a change by the way, um, but how is that going? So let's dive in. First of all, I'm a lot happier. That's a good thing. Okay, I'm yeah. a lot more straight uh, straight now, and. My diet hasn't changed that much. So for everybody who's listening in, um, I'm that guy, man, who eats at the midday, orders food, pizza. At seven o'clock, I order my kebab. And <laughs> at nine o'clock, nine o'clock, I get some snacks. I, I'm, I'm fu- fueled by like Mountain Dew or like Coca-Cola. Fueled <laughs> yeah, by Canada Dry, Mountain Dew, Coke. Oh, it's, it's terrible. I've, I've been incredibly bad my lifestyle. And, I'm quite sure that if I contain this lifestyle, like for next two years, yeah, I, I'm a diet for you, man. My life, my lifespan is going to be so tiny. But um, the thing is that like at the moment, um, born apartments, more in the green, in the woods already. Yeah. Um, I actually started at two o'clock, like I mentioned, hiking, uh, walking, yeah. okay. um, getting some running also going on. So I'm really trying to, to push that at the moment, just getting mm. some movement in. Because otherwise you're just behind your PC, you're reading mail after mail after mail, and what, what, what do you think like pushes you towards um like the uh, the unhealthy food? And, and by the way, like I'm, I, it's, not, it's not judgment at all, right? It's just like for people watching, right? Uh, to become self conscious, like what, what do you think goes through your brain when you're like, I want to have another pizza today, or I want to have that nice kebab, you know that, or that Coke is just looking so nice, <laughs> you know? Like what what goes inside your brain? Okay, cool. It's a good question. Because you know, you know, you shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't be eating this, right? You know, you shouldn't be eating that. Yet, you do it. So, what, what do you think? Like, what, what is that mental process? Yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, two things, two very small things. First of all, I don't have time to cook, right? You're so freaking busy. You work meeting after meeting. You like have like five or six hours of meetings every day. You're like doing uh-huh. sales pitches. You're doing pitch. You're, you're working continuously on something else. And then once you think you have time, like oh yeah, Alex, I'm, I'm gonna keep like an hour of time between three and four o'clock. What happens is that a client calls, or somebody for your team calls, or whatever. Okay, but why, why didn't you? Why don't you set those hours like non-negotiable? I mean, you're you're the CEO. Like you should be. I mean, you should have those boundaries set. Like do not call me. Like I'm not available. I'm off the grid. Two to three is my my time by the way mine is is also two to three like two to three like th- there's no work done um it's time for like eating whatever it is so why don't you have those like set times because because with that logic like i mean you could just work for i mean if you could just work for for as much right so it's not about that like why don't you have those boundaries set in place you think yeah that's true that's true there's boundaries i haven't set them yet and uh, to feel transparent on that one it, it's one of the hardest tasks i did because you know you've always said that's, that's the idea to set them boundaries and you do it every time, but sometimes pops up, right? And I haven't set them quite straight at the moment. I'm shifting mm. them too much. I'm also traveling too much. Um, I'm going to Prague, I'm going to Belgium, I'm going back to yeah, England yeah. sometimes. So it, it's it's just at the moment such a confusing time because yeah, yeah. I'm also starting new to other companies, which is amazing, but um, it, it just requires a lot of attention, right? And you know that mm. 
for example, if a client calls you at three o'clock and it's really, really important, yeah, you're the agency owner, you're responsible for it. But in the end, you're right, you're totally right. And that's what they do it on me. Um, that's, I think, a lifestyle that I developed during my growth, during my scaling, um, which is just bad, to be honest, just bad. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I drink Coke, why I just go for Red Bull, example, is, you know, right? you work late and, and you need the energy boost and yeah, yeah. you just go for the Coke. And just go for well, I, I, I think, that, I mean, there's a really good book, man, uh, called Caffeine Blues. And it basically talks about, like, I mean, the, the, the fact that uh, caffeine gets you addicted to caffeine, more caffeine, right? And so, like, uh, when you reset, like, you actually find your threshold energy levels to be much, much higher. And anyways, I'm not coming at you. I'm just saying, like, because, I, 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 like, I treat the student interviews as lessons. Because, I mean, as much as they can take so many valuable lessons from you, like, um, the, yeah, I, th I think, like, it's also really valuable to see that, like, you know, sometimes, uh, I mean, the lesson that I take from this is like, sometimes you think you can get more work done if you just don't set those boundaries, if you just get like that extra meeting done. But then in the long term, like the, the first second order consequence means that like, maybe you don't have enough time for like, you know, taking care of yourself and all that stuff. And so in the long term, like that, those little things that you got done, sure, like at that time, it, it was good. But in the long term, like it doesn't play out as, as well. And I'm telling you from my personal experience, like trying to eke out as much and then you like either hit burnout or you hit a roadblock or like something, you, you know, something sets you back. Um, so I think it's like, cause I mean, it's all about the long term, man. Um, I think like you have so much, you know, cool shit like on, 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 you know, coming up, like you, you want to be, you want to make sure you have the stamina for it, you know, and, and the energy for it. Um, like that's, what's going to separate, especially at the, at the high, high level. Like that's, what's going to separate like the entrepreneurs who really make it and, and the ones who don't like, it's, it's not so much strategies at that point. Um, it's like, I mean, part of it is strategies, right? But it's, it's, it's that inner work, that, that stamina. Yeah, exactly. It's getting energy every morning, right? To wake up and just go for it, I guess. I understand. Mm -hmm. And it's a good lesson. It's a good lesson, I think, for everybody. Like, you're getting so zoned out sometimes on your work that you just yeah. forgot, like, okay. And you always think to yourself, like, hey, I have, I, I'm just going to plan a, a holiday for a week and I'm just going to regen in the holiday, right? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it's true, man. The day to daily life, it's. It's complicated sometimes and it pushes you to the edge. Sure. That's true. For sure. No, that's a really good topic. But um, anyway, sh shifting gears a, a, a little bit, right? When you started with me, you, how much were you currently um, at with your freelancing, if you don't mind uh, sharing these numbers? Yeah, sure. Um, so at the moment of freelancing, it, it really depends. Um, but mostly it's around 10 to 12K a month. But, but when you, I mean, when, when you like, when we first started? Oh, when I first started, that it will build up to my. Well, my around four point five five k a month. Okay, five k a month. And then you added the agency, uh, and so freelancing uh, skyrocketed to like twelve point five now, and then the the agency told me it was like another twelve point five, right, or twelve or something. Yeah, around twelve point okay, five. Okay, so already. So it went like from zero to like thirteen as well. Uh, so total, you're at twenty five point five k. Yeah, and then think I oh. closed two clients next last week, so we are at twenty eight okay. moments. Um, okay, okay. Goal is forty k. <laughs> that, that's very, that's very, very solid. Um, now the, the reason why I ask that is because my question is, what are some of the things that, and this may be on the personal side of things, right? It may be completely different. Uh, maybe complete like the, the the exact same thing, but um, it can be it could be like completely different. Like what what are some of the things that um you've seen change in your personal life as you scaled up your income? Um, peace of mind, a lot, just peace of mind. It's, it's really going on holiday and don't caring about the money, but it's also like you have something to fall back on, right? Mm. It's like, you don't live paycheck to paycheck. You live something and then you work for something and you can enjoy it because you did it. It's, it's your business. It's, it's something that you created and it's working well. And especially when you go away for a week and you have somebody who is doing strategy or something. It's amazing then, right? Because yeah, you, yeah. you trust those people. Um, and purely financially, in a financial perspective, it's, it's just like, okay, I like that. I have it. <laughs> mm. It's such a, it's such like, I know, I know it, it's, it's cheesy, right? And I fully understand that, right? But financial freedom, it's, it's sometimes so enjoyable to just say like, hey, let's go on a restaurant. Let's go eat somewhere. Let's mm. enjoy uh, a ski trip somewhere. It's it's just changing your mind from day to day, and and just don't have to care about it in the world on that one. It's it's so cheesy and so cringy, I know, but uh, that's that's the lucky part, I guess. 
That's yeah. It. No, I, I definitely, I, I definitely uh, agree with that, man. Like, I think the it, unconsciously, I feel like we, the thing about money is like unconsciously, if you don't have it sorted, it weighs on your mind even, and, and you don't even realize, you know, because you, you don't even know what like, because at the time when you don't have money, like you don't know what the opposite looks like, you know, or, or the opposite feels like where like you can, you walk into an, like a restaurant, right? And you're with your homies and you're not looking at how much like uh, the, the, the the dish that you want actually costs, you know, it's like, oh, I, I want that. So I'll just like have it, you know, like it sounds, it sounds cheesy, but, but I do think that that's a, that's a, a feeling that, I mean, money, you know, we live in a, in a capital society, like money is is you know a lot of things are run by money right and, and and when you can when you don't have that burn on your on on your shoulders or it's not weighing on your mind or i have to pay this bill like you know how should i allocate my budget so that i can make it it's, it's you tap into a different type of freedom that allows you to then even skyrocket even more because now you're you're spending your time thinking about other ideas and all the companies you can create and all that stuff yeah and you know what's one thing about having financial freedom it's it's maybe not that you're spending the money but it's more like you have so much room for experimentation. Mm. Like I spend so much making just mistakes every month. I hire people to help me with social media. I hire people to design new business structures. I hire somebody who needs like new websites that I don't ever use, by example. Yeah. It's it's so valuable because like I spend so much money finding right people at the moment that mm. it's worth it for me. I spend like, I don't know, 4K, 3K sometimes a month on just freelancers who perform like a landing page designs for me, right? And mm -hmm. it's it's fun because I know that I, I will be using 2K because the landing page will not convert or will be bad, whatever it is. But yeah. spending that 1K on that, that particular landing page that actually is really good and the guy that behind it and, and really like, okay, you're worth it because you did it and it's really good and I enjoyed it and here's the money um, and including that person into the team. That's, that's wonderful. I have also a lot yeah. of students who are working for me and um, yeah, you know, like you pay them by the hour and you never know if they are well or bad, yeah, um, yeah. but it's worth it. It's really worth it. If you have financial freedom, just experiment them, giving the people a chance, opportunity to actually uh, show them their skills and getting paid for it immediately. Mm. That's just, in my opinion, worth it. So yeah, that's also what I enjoy with financial freedom. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. I think like it's, it becomes almost like a game, right? Where you can, where you can um, like test different things and, and experiment and, and, and like you're changing different variables and building cool cool stuff that maybe like it doesn't turn out to to uh, uh, to perform, but um, it gives you it gives you that ability to at least attempt to you know to, to truly fulfill your your potential, right? And, and then also the, the the amazing feeling that that it is to like be be able to take care of people, right? Uh, when you see like you know, you just sorted someone financially, right? Uh, and now they can pay for their apartment, they can pay for a nice apartment and even have like extra, like that's a really cool feeling. Uh, take care of their family, all that stuff. I think that's a, that's a really cool feeling that as entrepreneurs, like, you know, it's it, it feels really good, right? Especially when, once you once you uh, get past that that false period where it's like, you know, you're, you're in a way selfish where you're constantly th thinking of yourself. Like once you overcome that and, and the money is like out of the way now, like, now you can start thinking about the bigger picture and the bigger mission. Um, and that, that's really when it gets really fun. Yeah, really. Really that's just giving people the opportunity to work, give a little bit the people the opportunity to actually show them uh, that they're worth it, right? That's, that's, that's just amazing. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when it came to your agency, right? Um, and I always ask this question, but cause, cause I feel like people think that sometimes it's like a steady path to success and clearly it's not right. Obviously, um, with the mentorship, there's a very clear roadmap, all that stuff, but you got to put in the work and, you know, e even then, like you come across obstacles, right? Was, was there any point, uh, during the journey where you were like, ah, shit, you know, like I'm, I'm in a really uh, low moment right now. Um, and if there was like, how did you get out of that? What, what are some of the modes of thinking that, that you used to, to overcome that? Yeah. You're right. Um, I call it the kill scale, actually the skill scale, which means that I started the agency to mindset that I want to grow this. I don't want to mm -hmm. have like a 2K agency and then after a while, like just getting 2K of revenue every month and enjoying myself with 2K extra bonus. I started in my agency with the mindset of I'm going to scale this, um, which means that I immediately when I found a client and when I did the first month and I did myself all the copy, the ads, whatever it is, I tried to outsource it. I tried to find people for it and try to outsource it and build a team based on that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but because you are outsourcing something so fast, 
you make so much mistakes and you burn so much cash at the moment because all your profit margin is sometimes gone because if you hire a bad freelancer, then you're going to hire a new freelancer to fix the problem. Uh, if you hire a bad website developer, you need to hire a new website developer and you get, yeah, you lose so much money just scaling it up, right? And my big struggle was like when I was 4K, 5K um, and actually also at 8K, like I was finding my ideal team, my perfect uh, team. Um, and I lost quite a lot of money on, on just getting the right people, which I explained to you Leah already. And then I actually did the kill scale. Like everyone that do the kill scale, I see like, like, like what is bringing me money in? What is actually, <laughs> um, what are the expenditures? Mm -hmm. And from there on, I was just like, okay, cool. We don't need that. We don't need that. And just go into the essentials, right? Because in the end, your client wants just something that works. Just it doesn't need to be perfect. If you have somebody who can be quite fast, but decent and it's all right, then it's maybe more worthwhile. Worthwhile to have a fancy, fancy designer who actually takes mm -hmm. so much time to design something, right? Because you're in the business of performance. At least I am in the business of performance, which means yeah, that yeah. I need to perform and my clients need to have like they're happy. And if if, if you get them targets, robust, and all those elements, then it's good enough, right? So mm -hmm. I did a clear kill scale, and then that's a hard mindset. Because you are disappointing people, and and sometimes you just go to say freelancers, okay, but this doesn't work for me, even if they're performing quite well in, in their own opinion. Um, so yeah, I think the biggest struggle there was getting the right team and and really really being hard on that one. Just like, mm -hmm. okay, it's not working, no no worries, but uh, let let's yeah let's kill it here, and uh, let's get other people to try to scale it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, building that team is, is absolutely vital. Um, moving forward with with your agency, you mentioned you want to get to forty k uh, per month. Um, are, are there any any other things that I mean you see essentially like what, what is kind of the vision that you've got for the agency moving forward uh, for for your ecom agency? Cool man, I'm really glad you asked us. So first of all, I'm going to do total rebranding. Um, up until now, it's pretty funny. I don't have an agent's name. My agency is myself. I just saw myself and I think people know me, people trust me. And I have a lot of other people who work uh, behind me and, and work together with me to, mm -hmm. uh, to provide performance for my clients. But at the moment we're doing a rebranding, we're a new website, new logos, everything's going to be new. Um, and we're going to do a different approach. By example, at the moment we're just happy, making clients happy, ask what they want. We provide uh, an e-commerce performance uh, fee and that's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the moment we're doing uh, a full funnel marketing, a personalization flow, which means yeah. that we sit together with the clients, we have a full funnel ID, we create some experiments based on that one, and then we launch like a full funnel uh, in their ideation, uh, which they're happy with, and then mostly performs quite well for us. So that's a new concept that we're bringing on. Um, we're going more premium, which means that we're, yeah, a little bit um, going to have a, a difficult conversation with, with smaller clients. But uh, we're going more about premium, more bigger brands. Um, and especially we're going to raise the budgets on the ad spends. For example, at the moment when a client signs with me, it's mostly around 2K, 2.5K of ad spends on a monthly basis. But I'm really boosting that up to a minimum of 5K, 10K of ad spends on a monthly basis. Because in the meaning, in the end, right, if you have, let's say, um, a 5K of ad spend on a monthly basis, then you word it, then you were to ask like, 4k or 3k per client which is easy but my mm -hmm. example um you can't ask for like 2k or 2.5k in my opinion of 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 agency fee when you only have the 2.5k that's not absolutely not, right? absolutely not. So, that, that's gonna be very hard to make them a, a return especially given their break-even roas and all that stuff it's it's shooting yourself in the foot yeah yeah exactly so at the moment we're just gonna aim for bigger clients for more premium clients we're also aiming for bigger e-commerce stores um but up until now it's going quite well Awesome. Any um any final words, any final comments um at all that, that you want to leave the uh the audience with? Um love to man. Love to man. I think a lot of people are just like struggling with starting agency. They're struggling like finding their first client, right? And finding your first client, it's it's really, really easy, guys. Like you gotta know that your first client is probably somebody you know or probably some friend who has business and, and who can actually provide you with testimonial or proof of, proof of case, right? So if you're looking to get the first client, in my opinion, just go to your local store and ask them if you can help them. Getting your first client is not about getting your fee. It's about providing a service that can help you 
help your businesses, help your locals, mm -hmm. help other people. And that's the value of starting your e-commerce agency. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and, and give, I, I think when, when, when you say like local store, like also, I mean, local stores, if they have the e-commerce side of things, or even just like any friend who's starting, you know, any, any e-com e business, um, that's dope, that's dope. Yeah, of course, it doesn't need to be a local grocery store, of course, but mm -hmm. it can be definitely like a, let's say yeah, a snowboard yeah. store, or by example, um, a shoe store, right, which is online. Yeah, 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 for sure. Awesome, brother. Look, um, it's, 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 it's incredible, uh, and I also love uh, catching up with you. I think we covered uh, a lot of juicy topics. Um, and yeah, I, I wish you all the best with uh, copywriting baristas as well, which is a, a concept that, I mean, do you want to like mention briefly? Um, yeah, definitely, that's good. Yeah. So copy is actually a really new concept where we are training young talents to write performance writing copy. Performance copy is actually when you have copy that sells with ads, yeah. with website copy, with eBooks, blogs, right? And we, may, we like you mentioned, man, copywriting is the hardest skill to learn, but the most powerful skill for every marketer in the world, right? So we are training them. We have a course of six hours and a private course of two hours after that. And we're training people to actually become performance copywriters, right? Mm -hmm. And after that, we are actually connecting them to agencies where they can try out, where they can actually uh, get some practice on it. Uh, and we're helping those agencies. Yeah. Nice. So that's our new concept with copy baristas. It's kind of like helping uh, helping the agency uh, space as well, um, which is which is cool to see, man. All right, brother. Then uh, look, it's, it's it's good catching up. Um, you know, we could go for hours on, on end, but um, yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here, and uh, we'll uh, we'll speak very soon. Obviously, you've got a uh, you've got me for for anything you need, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll speak soon. Thanks a lot, man. I enjoyed it. Awesome, man. We'll uh, bye bye. Take care. All right, all right, all right. So that is a wrap with uh, Alex. Very interesting conversation. We talked about a bunch of things from hiring all the way to diet, nutrition, and exercise, right? So I really hope you could take value away from that. Now, if you wanna get results like Alex and you're ready to put in the work, this is not for everyone. Keep in mind, this is not for everyone. But if you have the work ethic and you're looking to finally build your online business or scale your online business well past the 10K month mark, go ahead and check out the link in the description. That is a link to book in a call with myself and my team to see if you'd be a good fit for the mentorship. And if you are, then we can discuss further. So with that being said, hope everything's gone well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.